community we're back at the peaks for developer summit thanks for sticking with us uh next up we got our next speaker he's already lined up and ready for you uh peter van der Berg is going to be speaking about getting started with uab can b1 with px4 and nxp uab can board uh, he's going to introduce us to the nxp rt d drone you can s32 k146 reference board running px4 and uab can version one we'll talk about s30k mcu and its references uh, can bus can fd not xpx4 and of course uav can b1 um, xp doesn't make drones they make reference designs uh, with using their silicon so let's hear it from nxp uh, community let's welcome peter for the introduction welcome uh, to the getting started guides with using uv can v1 with the px4 and the nxp uv can board so first, a, sm a small introduction to NXP. Uh, we make uh, silicon for automotive industries, industrial, mobile, smart home, and infrastructure. So uh, this presentation is about our automotive line. And uh, inside this automotive line, we have the mobile robotics line uh, for small rovers and for small drones. And uh, in that team, we make reference designs for drone solutions. So uh, let's start with the uh, UCAN S30K146. So the S30K146 is an ARM Cortex-M4 MCU uh, having uh, two CAN connectors supporting CAN and CAN FD. And uh, we incorporated the PixHawk uh, connector standard into, into our board so people can uh, connect it to the uh, FMU using the standard GST GH connectors. And uh, on the other side of our board, we have uh, different peripherals. So we have UART, SPI, LEDs, and uh, we even have uh, a secure element which uh, supports a NFC interface for key exchange. So the typical use cases of this reference design board is that we can uh, convert GPS data into Canvas, or make a uh, server or motor controller uh, using this platform, or having other SPI or I squared C peripherals we can convert. And uh, this is based on our automotive uh, S3DK platform. So this is the block diagram of our uh, board. So we have our MCU, we have uh, two CAN uh, files, uh, which can be used for a redundant connection. Uh, then we have a, a UART port people can use to uh, set up UART uh, peripherals or SPI or I squared C. Our SA050 is our secure element. Uh, on that we can uh, connect a NFC call and use uh, NFC products with that. And uh, our board can be powered using the CAN connector or we can connect it uh, directly through uh, 5 volt. So this is just another picture. So we have all the pinouts available. So uh, it's very versatile uh, to uh, start prototyping to make a, a UAV CAN solution. So the software support for the UCAN S3K board is uh, we support uh, NetX Artels. And uh, on top of that, uh, we can run PX4 Autopilot firmware. So that's the main talk we're going to have here today. We uh, also support the uh, UAV can uh, directly through a bare metal, if people are interested in that. And uh, with the board, we have our SCT2K design studio. And uh, with that, also we have an SDK if people want to play around with drivers or uh, there is a possibility for free auto solution. As last, we also have a, a SL CAN interface for PC debugging. So uh, we can also hook up our reference design board to your PC so we can uh, debug the CAN data. So uh, this is the, the kit we, we, we uh, sell. So we have a reference kit with two S32K boards uh, so you can communicate with each other. We uh, have a, a Terminator board and we have a, a DCD LG debug adapter which can be used to program and we and also has a serial console for uh, the shell debugging or uh, J-Link debugging for uh, GDB debugging. So first let's start um, because we have a kit we have two boards so the second board we can uh, use as a SL CAN node 
And uh, this allows us to uh, observe and debug the canvas in uh, Linux. And we can use the typical CanUtils scandum utilities to see the raw data. But uh, this also opens up the possibility to use uh, Py UAV can, which is the UAV can impl uh, implementation in Python. So you can already test some interactions through that. And uh, in the future, you can also use the UCAN UAV can v1 uh, tooling. Fortunately, it's still a uh, work in progress, so please check out their GitHub for the latest status of that. And uh, using SLCAN is pretty simple. So on your Linux machine, you install uh, the CAN utils package, you set up a daemon, and you have a SLCAN interface, and you can easily just dump the data so you can see what's happening on the canvas. But now let's start with the UAV CAN 1 uh, basics. Um, so uh, we want to plot out it into an OC model. So on the bottom layer, we have our physical canvas, which uh, takes uh, has just uh, CAN frames. We have a CAN ID and we have CAN data. And UAV CAN uh, takes care of the uh, network and transport. So it takes care on how everything is done. It takes care of the transport of multiple packages and on how to combine them together. And it has a, a presentation layer through their DSTL uh, layer. Um, I don't want to go super into deep to this. And uh, this afternoon, uh, Pavel is also having a presentation about um, inner workers of your weekend. So I would glad you remind to check that out. Um, so to implement your weekend V1 on the our uh, reference design board, we use the uh, reference uh, UAV can V1 transport implement implementation in C created by the UAV CAN development team. So um, this is uh, implemented on top of Canvas and takes care of uh, the UAV CAN V1 protocol. So uh, we have support for both classical CAN and CAN FD. We have written the transport and it's uh, extremely resource constrained uh, when it comes to coding. It's, it's very small, it's not a very uh, complex protocol. So you can also check it out here. And uh, on top of that, because UAV can is uh, just a transport layer, uh, we've been working together with uh, PixHawk on the DS15 standard, which is the open standard for drones we're working on to think about the messaging on top of it. Where uh, UAV can V1 is just a transport layer, um, all, not all the mechanisms are precisely described. So on how addressing is done, how communication is done, how setup is done, uh, security we also want to handle, and we want to have a general system for health and introspection. So a defined way to do that, and also on how to deal with bootloading. So the goal is here to create a plug and play experience for UAV CAN V1. So working on uh, specific specific avionics profiles for UAV CAN V1. Um, so, how does the PX4 setup works uh, with this reference design? So, on the left, we have our PixHawk FMU uh, running PX4 Autopilot. We have our uh, MUARP uh, middleware to do inter process communication. We have the full stack running. So, this is integrated, being integrated into the PixHawk FMU. But what we do with our reference platform that is that we also run uh, PX4. Uh, leveraging all the existing software there. So what we do is we uh, run the same UAV CAN V1 stack, the same DS15 message stack, and we convert that to MUARP. And um, then the user can just make a very simple custom application just utilizing the uh, MUARP uh, protocol uh, middleware as uh, documented uh, on the PX4 dev page. And uh, this uh, takes care of, of all the uh, UAV CAN stuff that's running beneath. So here we're going to show an example on how to do that. So uh, we just start with our debug interface. So this is our DC DLC interface. We can plug it into our debug board and to our machine. We have a USB serial console and a G-Link JTAG debugger. So um, 
first we have to uh, clone, to, to flash this board, we have to clone the PX4 firmware. And then we have to set up our tool chain. This is just easily done by uh, setting up, uh, executing the setup script, or otherwise the uh, git book goes further if you are stuck in that. Sometimes this can be a bit hard. Uh, then we check out our uh, work in progress branch for our UAV can uh, stack software. And can, we can just easily build this uh, uh, project. When it uh, has been successfully compiled, we can just easily uh, flash it to the uh, UAV CAM board using these commands. And uh, when it's flashed, we can just uh, easily connect to our uh, UAV CAM board. When we connect to it, we get our get our Nutex shell. And uh, in this example, we're just going to utilize existing software. So what we do here is we use the uh, GPS uh, daemon, which is already available in PX4. And for now, we run it in fake mode, so we create fake data, and we kind of start the UAV CAN V1 uh, converter software. Um, some some remarks. Uh, so right now we run it in fake mode, but you're free to uh, connect a uh, real GPS to the UART pins, and uh, this daemon takes care of the uh, location, and PX4 uh, parses this data, and we convert that. And uh, for the sake of this demo, uh, the DS15 is still a work in progress. And in the future, we're going to support, of course, the GPS mes messages. Uh, but for now, uh, we're using a, a non-defined set for that. So uh, this is the demo uh, for the GPS. So on the left, we have a, a Q ground control session running on an FMU. And on the right, we have the you can uh, reference design board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, video is not working, but I'm just going to talk you through this. Um, so, what pretty much is happening if we uh, start the UAV CAN software on our FMU, and if we start it uh, on our UAV CAN reference design board, as shown in the previous slide. Um, UAV can take care of it. So right now we don't see that there is a lock. And if this video was working, uh, then there was a showcase that we get valid GPS data f to our FMU through uh, UAV can. So that's the power there. It's easy, easy to set up and we have all the tools from the PX4 ecosystem. And wow, okay, I did something wrong. So. This is the video. So uh, on the left side, we are uh, setting up uh, UAV CAN. On the right side, uh, we start a GPS uh, daemon and we start the uh, CAN node. And uh, now we're converting it to MUERP and here receiving the data. And we see here on the left is showcasing that we now have a GPS fix. And this is an example on how a GPS fix for instance, can be communicated over UAV can, but thanks to the DS15 set, we can uh, extend it to different, multiple different applications. Um, so that was the talk about uh, UAV can on uh, PX4, um, but we also have implemented uh, UAV can directly on a other uh, product we've been working on. So. Uh, this is a reference design for a, a battery management system. And uh, we initially prototyped the uh, UAV CAN on our UCAN S32K 146, and we could easily uh, port this to the Nutix running on this, uh, on this battery management system. And we have implemented the base set of uh, DS15 with the BMS meshes profile. And uh, what you see on the right is a, a simple example of that. So uh, what we see here in comparison to PX4 is that um, we already had an application and it's very easy to integrate uh, LibCanard and DS15 on top of that. And um, so we implement the BMS measures profile there. So um, an example on how we have implemented uh, is available on this GitHub page, but um, we're working on to be able to release uh, the source code of this BMS 
completely so people can uh, use this reference platform and learn on how to implement uh, UAV cam. Um, so some conclusions. Um, PX4 with UAV can is a very easy uh, solution to get started with UAV can, and we can reuse a lot of uh, things from the PX4 ecosystems. For instance, the uh, GPS parser, or uh, for instance, uh, gyro drivers, uh, because it's already in there. Um, People can also look if they uh, want to go to resource constraint or make a very uh, competitive solution to Nodex or even Freeartos and bare metal. They are very low print uh, alternatives. So uh, especially the footprint becomes small, but then it's a trade-off when it comes to driver support, especially in bare metal. A user has to work everything out by itself. Whereas uh, if someone decides to use BX4, there is a huge ecosystem and huge community behind it to make it easier. But uh, that's the scalability what a user could ch choose for. So uh, for instance, the SRGK platform itself, uh, the, uh, it's, it's very scalable. So we have a Cortex M0, which is only 128 kilobytes, which can be a very small, cheap package where you can enable UAV can on a small product. But we also have a very, uh, complex and fast uh, MCU with M4 F core, where you can include um, a lot of uh, smart functionality into your product. Um, something I also want to uh, point out. So uh, in our mobile robotics teams, uh, we were working on multiple solutions. Uh, we have been working on our NXP FMU reference platform. And uh, we're also working on a uh, NefCube companion system uh, software. And um, this afternoon, my colleague Ian Galloway is going to give a presentation about that. And uh, we want to showcase what different ecosystems is. and. Uh, for the people uh, sh indicating that they attended the PX4 developer submit, submit, there is a chance to win a free drone kit and NefCube companion computer. So check that out. <laughs>